Hello everyone, welcome back. If you're Axure user, you've probably seen some emails about Axure 9 beta and all the new features it might pack. Today, I want to walk you through some of these features uh, as a first look. Try to get inspired because the tool packs a lot of muscle, especially if you wanna make your prototypes as advanced as possible. For example, using variables, math, not just like a click through, which any other tool allows you to do. And it's really easy to master it actually. So let's dive right into it. But let me just show you what's new. And right off the bat, as you can see, they implemented dark mode, which is optional. I'm gonna try to just turn it off because I don't like how white canvas looks against if I can find it where would this be so after some investigation I found it under preferences and it's dark or light let's stick with light I think the dark one works for when you're designing a bit more darker UIs it's gonna be easier on the eyes and easier to make the choices. But right off the bat, what's new about it, it seems like it became much more lighter and flatter UI. I can see some of the references to other tools, um, a lot of selection boxes, inserting of the shapes. I like that Axure now can allow you to work with vectors uh, from version eight. And I think it's they're gonna focus on that even more going to uh, version nine. And I don't think there is much of a change apart from just restructuring it and making it much more fluid. Let's delete that border. And I know that you can also add an image and select how it's gonna be placed. Let's say, I'm just gonna insert that image, center it, no repeat. Let's say this is our one of our objects. I know for sure what we did and what's new is that most of the interactions now are done in line. Just to demonstrate one of those things, as you can see, we still have a widget panel uh, from before, which is quite obvious one. Let's say if we would drag a, a simple shape of a button, the interactions now are hidden under the tab and you can all do in line. So they revamped this uh, approach to adding interactions. And if you're a bit new to this, um, Basically, before that, it was quite hard to add different cases, interactions. Now it should be much more user friendly. So let's try doing that. Let's say I see that we have some common interactions. So you can add the typical object, I guess, mouse over style effect. Let's say let's change a color quick, make the typeface bold, and opacity is fine. It's all good. So we add a mouse over like an inline parameter. Now, what happens on the click? Let's say we open page one. So it's quite simple. You can do that. I guess you can give it a name as well. Button one. And you can insert more actions. And as you can see, they hit most of these actions were available before right in a separate window. Now you can just do it really easily right away. And what I wanna do is click, maybe also display something like an alert box which says you just clicked on this button and let's see if it allows oh it allows me to drag around so this is also much different um, as you can see you can just order the actions in, in the right order and let's just preview see what's new boom you just clicked on this button and it opened the page one Great, it works. Here I see that what they did differently is the wrapper for the actual prototype. You can remove the widget and have a prototype ready. So you can actually use your test and it looks like a real deal. You also can use arrow keys to go from page to page, which is I guess quite handy. That's pretty neat. I think the outlook improved. Oh yeah, and the URL changes. So this is a really good deal about Axure, that they produce a code and a prototype which you can just link to your users to user test 
And the best bit is that the URL changes depending on where you are and what condition it is. Hiding the header of Axure and all those options like documentation and taking notes and getting feedback produces a different uh, URL. And usually this is what I use for my user tests. Great. What else is new? I think most essential bit what I want to highlight and what I read about was the conditions. This if thing, enable a case in the corner, allows us to add a condition. And let's say a condition is um, journey split. And as you can see, they made it much more user friendly. Um, I read a little bit about this and it's basically just defining what the user can do. Before that, it was quite hard to grasp, especially for juniors. So we can add some logic to the button. Let's see if our cursor enters area of the widget, our button do something. And as you can see, it's kind of building like what you see is what you get. It's like building step by step the story. And now it added the logic, what happens in the click. Now, let's see what happens to the dynamic banners, which is another big thing in Axure. Let's say if we convert it in an object to dynamic panel, we can give it multiple states. And just to demonstrate it, before that you would have to open multiple uh, windows, multiple panes uh, in order to see what's inside and then flip throughout. At now you can do it in line, meaning you can see I have one state, we can add the second state and the first state. And in the second state, let's say we're gonna add uh, maybe a different image. For now it's placeholder. In the third state, we can add a placeholder but box or something like that. As you can see, the common interaction is a bit kind of like AI driven. It suggests different things I can do quickly with a specific object. So let's say on click, I wanna set it to next state. I can just add that. I can select my slides box or dynamic panel. I can say animated. So what I want to do, let's say, is if I click on a button and the state of a panel is two, it should take me to page two. If it's uh, three, page three and so forth. So we add like quite complex logic to it, which is not achievable with other tools. Again, this is nothing new with Axure. So at the moment we're saying uh, on click, if cursor enters error, yada, yada, do this. I want to delete that because we don't really need, but let's edit that logic. So the condition builder at the moment, again, is much more fluid and much more easy to do. We're saying if cursor enters yada yada, do this, which is quite, you know, it's stupid. It's already there. We don't need it. But what we want to say is if let's say state on a panel slides equals state one, open me page one, right? Now let's see if the tool actually allows to copy the condition so we can easily replicate it. Paste, paste, and I want to just edit the second condition to state two, and then third one to state three, and does it, and then toggle it. As you can see, it really quickly allowed me to do all those conditions and I just need to edit now what page it links to and it's everything is in line, that's fascinating. So it's much more visual, much more clear way to understand exactly how the logic is done and how it's structured and how you can actually build the story. So let's test it out. Let me see if I can visually show you exactly what page it lands. If status one, it should open page one, correct? If status two, which I switched by clicking on it, button two, opens free. Okay, I have made an error. That's good. Oh, okay. Yeah, as you can see, I cho chose page three instead of two. Let's just pro for clarity add B. Let's preview it. Let's go back to home. Let's say if it's page one, it lands on page one. Now if we on second state, it should land on page two, correct? And on the third state, it should land on the third. The logic is there. We're linking multiple interactive elements together. And that's how you can create much more advanced prototypes. But, you know, it's not really about prototypes. I just want you guys to know exactly what's new in Axure. And this kind of building of the same thing is what it, there is. And I think it's more of an architectural change and more of like perceptual change of functionality of how you can do things better. 
On Ovid, we also improved some of the styling elements, specifically text, all those features which we actually lacked a little bit before, but it's gonna allow a bit more flexibility, especially when rendering prototypes in HTML, because sometimes the text would be, you know, misplaced or you would have like a big paragraph of bullet points and they just would collapse on a different browsers. What I wanted to show you next is a bit digging deeper into the uh, dynamic panel. So I already highlighted how you can go from state to state inline, how you can duplicate the same state, and let's say add something new to it. So maybe that. And now I'm gonna have a fourth state. So let's say if I preview it, it automatically has a fourth state, which is quite easy to do. You don't have to click through, click in. So it, the streamline it, it, it just streamlined the process so much you have different options to go through the different states you can also isolate it meaning you don't see anything else but your dynamic panel i think seeing how it impacts everything else is a really big win before because before that you would always see objects in isolation mode i think what's new if actually as well is that you can place objects anywhere you want as you can see i have my canvas i could place a panel somewhere else and know exactly where it's at and how it looks like on, let's say, to add interaction on page load. One page is loading. I want that box move that box by no two zero and zero. Let's say 100 by 100 pixels. OK, and as you can see, I added that condition to the page load. Boom, and it animated in easy as that. We have an outline option, as you remember, the outline was separate, but it's just a placement of the existing panel. Um, there is not really anything new to it. Talking a little bit about our boards themselves, you can actually set what sort of uh, dimensions you have. So I can, let's say, pick an iPhone 8 Plus instead. I'm just gonna put it there and I can see the fold. It kind of allows me better to design for a specific medium and it isolates it. Before that, it was just floating in the middle or you have to position to zero, zero. So if we preview it for mobile devices, as you can see, it's the same exact logic. Our animation box are still floating around. That's good, the, the dimensions are still working. Um, as you can see, we can scroll up and down just how you would do if, um, if your typical phone let's say what else is new i think other things which actually which are going to impact my day-to-day -day. i don't use all the you know bits but dynamic panels the flexibility it takes the hardboards setting up interactions uh, it's going to allow me to easier onboard a less killed people in action or just do it quicker myself oh the actual share is different proto one test allow comments that's that one I want you to show. As you can see, the uploading of a prototype is more in line. Uh, let's preview right away. It seems a bit quicker than usual, actually, as well. Oh, and it tells you when it's complete, too. But imagine if I'm a user on a cloud and I just want to add comments to the screen, uh, be it because we are collaborating with our designers or product people. I could say something like, the box that floats in seems broken. Why did you add it there? Doing it and I can post it on the screen. And as you can see, the comment is it's much more like in vision like and I like that we actually get inspired from, you know, products which do it great. But if I want to add to a specific object, Thought it would allow me to do that as well. On the screen. Is it just that I'm able to? Oh, okay. So it just allows me to highlight a specific area, and then I enter like a mode to add a specific comment. So let's see on a button. Make it blue. Make it green, and then it adds a button comment so that adds a little bit of uh, flexibility again it's nothing new from what other things have but yeah that's my first look of Axure um, some of you might not think that it's a big upgrade uh, but I think it is you can't really go much further than this yet I don't know what other prototyping tools are gonna bring to the market but I'm really excited what Axure is doing right now uh, because that just makes it much more faster 
and it reduces to a barrier that someone who is new to this tool is actually going to make it. And by the way, I'm also planning to do a series of actual tutorials, kind of like from fundamentals to advanced knowledge and how to use, let's say, math variables and all those tricky narrative bits which make actual, you know, the tool to use instead of using something easier to do or a beginner tool like InVision, let's say. Uh, give a like if you like this video, share with your friends, uh, subscribe to this channel if you're new to this. I really appreciate it and see you next time.